At least 2,000 times a day, I get asked the question, what telescope should I buy? And if you know anything about telescopes, literally anything, then you'll understand why that is such a difficult question to answer. Because there are such a diverse selection of different telescopes, but meant for different things. We have telescopes that are designed specifically for looking at the planets. We have telescopes that are designed for looking at star clusters, nebulae, galaxies, your neighbours. Nope. Too far. But in today's video, I think I found the answer to all our prayers. A telescope that can do pretty much everything and capture images as amazing as this. But here's the really, truly insane part. This quadruplet flat field refractor telescope is only $599. So let's find out more about it and look at some of the incredible images I have captured using it. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So, specifications. This is a 71 mm quadruplet refractor telescope with a flat field. What that means is the telescope has essentially a 3 inch diameter aperture, so it lets in a decent amount of light. The quadruplet part in its name relates to the number of lens elements inside the telescope. The flat field aspect is very important because people will often buy additional attachments for telescopes that will produce a flatter image and they can cost quite a bit extra to add onto your telescope. With certain telescopes, when you get towards the edge of your image, you'll start to see stars have a bit of a weird shape, and perhaps even the color of your image will start to deviate slightly. So already we have two very important buzzwords that make this telescope very appealing, quadruplet refractor telescope and flat field. Now, when I initially did this review, I put the ASI 183MC camera onto this telescope. I recently purchased this camera for just under 300 British pounds, which means I purchased the camera for about half price of the telescope. I did take some very nice images with it, but then the other night I decided, why don't I really push this telescope to its limits? Because what's the point of making a review video talking about a telescope if you're not gonna showcase the best of what the telescope can see? But the whole point of this is I've pushed it to its absolute limits. And the first two targets I imaged when using the ASI 2600 MC camera on this telescope were the Andromeda Galaxy and Pleiades. Now I think the image of the Andromeda Galaxy is quite nice, especially for the fact that it was captured with a $599 telescope. But the one that I've managed to produce to the Pleiades is one that was beyond my wildest expectations as to what could be captured from my garden. This is a Bortle 6 location, which means there's a lot of light pollution and therefore it's very hard to bring out lots of fainter details present in deep sky objects like the Seven Sisters. But I think you can agree that it's done a really good job here, like a very impressive job. I also want to mention that the raw images are very different to the final image that I show you. So this is the raw stacked image produced of the Andromeda Galaxy. And then this is my final image. The fact that I've taken these level of images with a telescope that costs less than a thousand dollars and for exposures from a bottle six garden that were less than four hours in total exposure. I mean, I just think that's really impressive. Yeah. Right, so I've provided you with the Apatiza. Now for the main course, because the next image that I captured was of the North America Nebula. Now, it's not really one that I've imaged much before in the past, but I'm very comfortable in saying that I think this image that I captured of the North American Nebula with the Ascar 71F telescope is one of the best images I've ever captured in my entire life. But yeah, I'm just blown away by the fact that this managed to capture that. And if you weren't quite impressed by that, I also imaged the Heart Nebula, which I've actually managed to frame very nicely with the telescope and the camera. I really like this image of the Heart Nebula. Again, it's picked out a lot of detail and there's a decent variety of colors. And then the last one, I've probably saved my least favorite image to the very end, but it's because it was getting very late in the night and I pointed it towards Mars. And the only reason I put this telescope up against Mars was not to observe it. It was actually because I could see on my sky atlas that the planet Mars was passing nearby some nebulae, which were really, really faint. But I figured I'd give it a shot and just see what I could pick up. And again, it's done an amazing job. I will be the first one to say it that I do think I've over sharpened this image ever so slightly, but you can critique my editing of these images all you wish. And if you think you can do better yourself, then why not purchase one of these telescopes by clicking on one of the links in the description below. It's good, 
it's, it's really good. This telescope is very new to the market, which I'm gonna say is the reason as to why I haven't seen many review videos on it. But I expect we're about to see an explosion in review videos of the Ascar 71F because it is insanely capable at such a low price. One last thing that I want to mention real quick is that the images captured were 60 second exposures and I'm going to try and do this in future videos as well because I'm using an AM5 tracking mount and I know that's the kind of thing that people are going to go after me for and say oh yeah the telescope's great blah 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 but it's only capturing these images because you're using such a powerful expensive telescope mount. Well I think even with the Skywatcher star tracker that I have you'd be able to capture 60 second exposures. So you could very easily make the case that if I put a guide scope in one of the dovetail brackets on here, I could be taking 10 minute, five minute long exposures that are really good. But instead I've kept it down to 60 seconds because I think anyone with a tracking telescope mount will be able to achieve exposure lengths that long using this telescope. And I'm gonna try and do that in all future videos going forward. So the mount is no longer an important factor towards considering what the telescope camera accessory is capable of achieving because every mount should be able to achieve 60 seconds. Right, thanks for watching. The link to this telescope is in the description and the comments down below. So make sure to click on it to find out more and maybe even purchase one for yourself. Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.